Leeds was the kind of dawn of a new age for me. People in my village in Cornwall were saying to me, oh, that's, that's the industrial north. We'll never see, see you again. Or if we do, you'll never be the same. The distance is enormous. And together with a friend, we traveled together in his beaten up old car. Um, and there we were on the motorways, um, being overtaken by articulated lorries. And, and it, it was all part of the adventure. But having got there, we realised this is a great place to be. The transition from an, an all-boys grammar school to life at Leeds was made slightly easier, I think, with the fact we went to, to Boddington, which in those days was all male. So we were going from one male community to another, and that in many ways kind of eased the transition. Now in those days, Leeds was one of the very few academic institutions that um, insisted on a year abroad. I'm very pleased I didn't have the choice it, it developed a much more mature perspective on your studies and, and going back to Leeds for my final year, I think I approached it with a, with a much higher level of maturity. Immediately after graduation from Leeds, I taught English in Madrid. After two years, I felt, yeah, it's time to, to do something different. I became involved in voluntary probation work and I became very, very attracted to it as, as, as a profession and did a postgraduate diploma in social work with probation as an option. During that time, um, I had met Pilar, my wife. There was a, a summer language school in Cornwall, as a matter of fact, and they asked me to go and be the, the head of studies there, which I did. Um, and I met Pilar as, as a student and uh, a group leader who came across with gosh, a group of about 30, 35 Spanish students of all ages. Our relationship burgeoned and we got married five years after I graduated. I admire what Pilar did. She had a, she had a civil service job, which in Spain is, is one of those hard to get posts where you're competing against hundreds of people. And she literally gave that up to come over to England and for us to get married. And so it was a, an incredibly valiant thing to do. I worked my way up through the various, the, the hierarchical structure of the probation service and ended up working for it for just over 30 years. We went on holiday to, to Spain in 2013. We were having breakfast on the, on the terrace with, with our son Tristan and we decided what we were going to do that day. And Pilar said, but before we do that, I'm, I've just got to go back to bed. I'm so, so tired. I left her for a little bit and then went through to see how she was, whether she was sleeping or not. And it looked as if her body was shutting down. Um, she was violently ill. Um, she lost the use of her legs. Um, she tried to communicate to me in, in a way I just could not understand what she was trying to say. I was witnessing my wife literally going into a coma. I can't praise the Spanish medical authorities enough because they, they acted incredibly quickly. I didn't feel a sense of real panic until the doctor came out to me and I could see the look on his face. Um, and he said, you know, how long's your wife been like this? And I said, this has happened literally within the last hour. And he said, look, she is, she's very ill. Uh, we're not sure what the cause of it is. The neurosurgeon said that we're going to have to operate because she has um, a growth. Uh, and you're suddenly faced with, in the space of two or three hours, from being a family that's looking forward to the days ahead of your holiday, to being in a situation where, you know, the fulcrum of the family was, you know, at death's door. They excised um, as much of the tumour as they could. Um, but because it's the brain, they, they couldn't explore too much because of the potential collateral damage that could be done to other parts of the body. She was in intensive care for six days, I think it was. Um, and I was there um, at the moment she actually opened her eyes, which was amazing. We flew her back from Santander to, to London. I mean, while she was here in her own environment, I think that helped her a great deal. Um, but there was, no, there was no disputing the fact that I could see she was deteriorating. I didn't realize that there were a number of different brain tumors that you can suffer from and they're graded. 
um, in terms of their severity. Um, and uh, Pilar, um, she had a grade four, which is the highest. Uh, it's the most aggressive, it regenerates, and the prognosis is very poor. You harbor all sorts of unrealistic hopes in many ways that actually the next stage will enable her to progress further. But it was quite clear that she didn't have the strength to undergo a course of chemotherapy five months on from the original collapse that she suffered. Uh, we saw the uh, consultant and he said, look, I don't want to be brutal here about this, but your wife has very little time left. He said, because I asked him, you know, is there any reason, any cause that we can, you know, begin, that will enable us to come to terms with our loss? And he said, look, by the very nature of this illness, it is entirely random and it's just sheer bad luck. She was approaching a time whereby she could be better looked after in the hospice than, than at home. And that was another hard decision for me, but I had to recognise that the quality of nursing care, palliative care at the hospital, hospice was far in excess of what I could give her here. She passed away in the early hours of the 3rd of February 2014. And just to add to the poignancy of it, it that was the eve of my son, our son's birthday. From the time she collapsed in that way that I described to the time of her death, barely six months had passed. My interest was drawn to Professor Short's um, research into viruses. But I was struck by um, what Professor Short said, that in her lifetime of combating cancer, this is the closest she's, get, she's got to um, a scientific breakthrough. And to be on the cusp of that in the way that she appears to be is, is truly exciting. The added bonus for me has been that this, this is based in Leeds. Um, it's just the perfect storm in many ways. To, to feel proud about your university in a way that could make a difference. Brain cancer is the poor relation, it seems, of, of, that, of, that, of, of cancer research generally and starved of funding. Maybe it's because the prognosis traditionally is very, is very poor, um, but it's, it's a kind of a vicious circle. Yeah, the prognosis is poor because not enough research is going into it. So here was an opportunity for me, in some ways, to, to make a contribution uh, to what I hope will be an extraordinary scientific breakthrough.